Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Can you say deja vu all over again? <laughs> well, that's what we have here, I think. It's an old, another old Gibson. Same kind of vintage as the last one that we worked on. If you need to reference that one, that was the one that I said, uh, this one made me cry. That was the title of that video, and there was a two-part video on that one. This one looks to me like it's probably about the same vintage. Uh, this one's a different color, obviously. It's solid black. And in a lot of ways, this one's in better shape. In some ways, not as good, but in other ways, better. The fretboard on this one looks pretty cracked up, dried out, cracked up type of thing. The top here has been repaired before you can see. You can see that area there that's been repaired and here too it looks like. This area is still cracked and loose. I can move it around. The label, I can't read it. I, I've had uh, the magnifier in there, the lights in there and all kinds of things. And I just can't quite read what it says. It says style, and what it looks like it says is a B1, but it's probably L1, I would assume. And I don't know, <laughs> can't read the number at all. I can't read it. I can barely make out where it says guitar. They hand wrote that in there also. That was the only thing that was fairly obvious. <laughs> but uh, you can see it's had a couple of sets of tuning keys on it in its life. Kind of hold up there. Just tell you the history on it that I have from the customer. He says, here's my Gibson L1. Not sure of the year. The hardware with pins are in the case. The bridge on it is not original. It has scratched varnish. <laughs> okay. My mother gave me this guitar in the late 80s. She got it uh, as a teen, probably around the mid 60s. The story is that it was in a pile of stuff to be thrown away in our hometown, or her hometown of Stu mm, this is a tough one, Snohomish, with, uh, Washington. That's S-N-O-H-O-M-I-S-H. Snohomish is how I would pronounce it, Washington. And her younger sister grabbed it and later offered it to sell it to his mother for $10. Apparently she must have bought it. I believe the repair work was done before she acquired it. I used to play it occasionally and thinking, and thinking back it started to not holding the tuning. Probably because the internal braces were collapsing. So anyway, uh, you know, he's had it in storage a long time and that kind of thing. It, he shipped it to me from Utah. It's been in the shop here a month or so, a couple of months actually probably, and I just haven't had time to get to it. But it looks like a pretty decent instrument and I don't think we'll have too much trouble fixing it. I haven't been inside it yet to look and see what we're talking about in terms of bracing, so let's see if we can do that the easy way first. So we'll start with the lighted mirror and go inside. I can generally see a lot that way. So there's a brace right through here somewhere. And this brace, both braces appear fine. This crack here looks like it might could be loose on the inside. There's a crack right along, right along here. You know, I don't see anything broken. I can see daylight through here though, with the mirror. And I don't see anything broken back here either. It looks to me like the braces are perfect. I don't see anything wrong with the braces. And I don't see any missing braces. You know, a lot of these had ladder braces across. You know, people have got on me because I'll say, well, you know, the bracing pattern is, seems unusual to me. And they say, that's ladder bracing. Well, yeah, I know what ladder bracing is. Obviously, I've seen a lot of it. But every one of these things that I've looked into, every single one of them, I think, has been slightly different. I'm not kidding you. You know, people say, oh, they're all the same. They're not. This one just has the two braces, and I don't see any sign that there were ever any ladder braces across. Just the two braces, and that's it. Some I've seen have one brace across here. Some I've seen have had a couple of braces across here, and they look original from the factory to me. 
So I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's the ver you know the L1 versus the L23, whatever. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm not a historian, and I don't claim to. You know, I don't even generally look all this stuff up because it's not of interest to me, really. Well, now look here. I do think I see. No, no, I think it's still solid. I thought I could see a shadow there where maybe that brace was loose. I think the braces feel solid. I'm going to see if I can move that brace. No, it's solid. I Again, it's got the very small sound hole. Can't get in there for nothing. I can't see it. Look, I can't get my hand out once I get my hand in there. Yeah, it's really tight quarters. But it doesn't look like we need to be inside it at this point. Um, maybe I'll get the snake camera and go in there and look around a little bit more. But I, as far as I can tell, it looks really good. I, I don't honestly think it's going to need that much work to uh, bring it up into condition. <laughs> you know, when I said deja vu all over again, well, this is deja vu all over again, too, because these are the same junk tuners that were on the last one. Almost identical. As a matter of fact, I think they are identical to the ones that were on the last one really crummy tuners and as you will remember the other one had a very very similar bridge to this this bridge uh, is slightly different in, the, in that these are not anchored in either side but it looks to be almost the exact same bridge that was in the last one and so anyway we can make this bridge work be kind of cool if we had an original bridge for it these um, adjusters are a little bit smaller than we're in that last one. The last one had quarter size adjusters. These are uh, roughly dime size, so that's not too bad. The biggest negative is that these posts go down through and go all the way through, so we're going to have to make sure that can't happen any further anymore. Um, I don't like that at all because that just drills holes in the top, and you can see where the holes have been drilled here. And there is some additional heavy damage right in this area. And there is a hole actually punched all the way through, and I have no clue why that would be there. Can't even come up with a good idea unless somebody had some kind of a pickup on this and they screwed it in right there. The tail pin on it looks to be pretty much original to me. I would think this might even be the original tail pin. The uh, strap button. Um, I'm... Oh, it's, it's not that tight. I thought it was going to be really hard to get out of there, but it, I just I moved it with my fingers and it came right out. That appears to probably be original. The, that's pretty much it on the, on the uh, instrument. Um, the frets themselves are surprisingly not that bad a shape. Although they may be filed down more than they look. It, the fretboard is really kind of scalloped out from finger abuse over the years so we might have to do quite a bit of work to the fretboard but maybe not I'm hoping we keep those original frets I like those little small frets and I don't have any frets that are going to be that small even my mandolin frets are not quite that small they're almost that small but and they will do for this but you know it'd be nice to have them that real small fret like it has in there see signs where there had been a pick guard on it at one time here that it had a clamp and it looks like it also had a clamp right here so it did have signs of that it does have the two little holes right here where it uh, apparently went in to the side where the pick guard went in the side there so i haven't talked to the customer uh, over the phone yet to see just how far he wants to go with this but, you know, I can see going two ways. You know, one would be kind of a full-on and try to make it, you know, you know, keep the original finish and all that, but, but pretty much do a full-on restore and try to, you know, get it up in just perfect, as perfect condition as we can get it, including a pick guard and, you know, as original tuners if we can find them and that kind of thing. So, we, you know, you can go to that major extreme to just get it playable and, you know, just, you know, you know don't do anything major to it. Just get it playable. And if this was mine, I think I'd probably lean a little towards that. I'd probably just go ahead and make it playable. Uh, you know, do as good a job on it as we can. Fix the little nicks and bad places that we can fix and just get it playable. And so I think that's the recommendation I'm going with. And uh, we'll see what the customer wants to do.
I just thought I'd point out that the guitar has a very nice original case up in really pretty darn good shape. You know, it's, you know, it, it needs a little TLC. The handle is pretty much shot. There's not really much there that can be done with the handle unless a person, you know, that was into leather work, which I can do leather work, would want to remake the handle. And that would be kind of cool to, to go to that extreme and remake the handle rather than replace it. Um, the, these two uh, latches here are, are bent for some reason and I don't know how, they, how that could have even happened or if it was done that way originally. I, I, oh, they're fairly symmetrical in the way they're bent but I can't understand how or why. I've never seen them bent like this before. So I don't know. They're, they're kind of twisted like, you know, it's kind of weird. The inside of the case I think looks pretty good. I think I've got, there's some packing in there, I think. Yeah, there's, there's some packing in here, but the original, the inside of the case itself looks pretty good. You know, there's really not too much wrong with it. So, in terms of the case at least, I think, you know, we'll probably fix the handle one way or the other, depending on what the customer wants to do with that. But uh, other than that, I don't think we have to do too much to the case. Overall, I think this is going to be a fun project. I hope you enjoy it. I have now talked to the customer, and uh, he's on the same page as me as far as just getting her fixed up and, you know, not going crazy with the restoration. Um, I don't think it needs that. I mean, you know, it's, you know some people would think so and, and wouldn't want to go that far. But I think if we just, you know, fix the obvious broken problems and uh, get it up in good playable condition and do the best we can with that, get some decent tuning keys on there, a decent bridge. Um, I'm not saying this is not a decent bridge. I'm just saying it's going to need some work uh, before it's a decent bridge because, uh, it, you know, we can't have these things going through the bottom here and poking holes in the top. That just won't do. And these tuning keys are just total junk in my opinion. Uh, I wouldn't put those on a uh, $5 Kmart guitar. I'll point out that when I had the lighted mirror in there, as I said, I could see light coming down through the top. So we're going to have to do some fairly extensive work on this crack and uh, you know where it had been glued before. We're probably going to have to try to get their glue out of there maybe. I don't know. Uh, but you can see, maybe you can see, let's try to zoom in here and see if it'll show up but I don't know if you can see it or not but there you go you can see it there now you can see the top flexing so it, it flexes quite a long ways but I don't think it flexes down here where this glue is and I could see light coming through this glue it I think it's solid down there so you know on the other hand maybe I should just leave well enough alone I don't know I'm gonna you know I always make these decisions on the fly as I get into them because uh, it's really hard to just say one, one way is the only way to fix it, you know. I'm going to take this off because I don't like this flopping around, and we're going to do that first. I can see that this has been replaced. Those are, they're very similar screws, but they're two different screws. They're not the same. So <clears throat> there's, this has been on and off, and screws have been lost and replaced over, the time, over years. There you can see the end, and uh, you can see it's kind of a decorative uh, piece in there, similar to what I put on my custom guitar. Looks real nice, actually. It's a shame that all has to be covered up by that tailpiece. <laughs> I got out my trusty little magnifier here and looked at this crack very close, and I'm glad I did that. I, uh, it changed how I feel about this. Uh, I thought there was glue in this down through here and that it had just, you know, the glue just wasn't tight and the joint wasn't tight, but there is no glue in that crack. It looks to me like the old crack was glued right alongside it and it's cracked again. There is glue, I, whoever did it did a pretty good job and there is a, a slight crack right next to this big crack now and this and I can see it flex all the way down through there and I can see all the way through the crack into the inside of the guitar so this thing is really powerful and you can really investigate things well with this so with that knowledge it looks to me like all we have to do is just get glue down in this crack really really good get some sort of way to close it up now there's a lot of stress on this it might crack again 
but as you can as I can see here now it didn't crack where the old glue was it cracked in a new spot so my goal is if we cr if we get this glued all the way down through here really well with tight bond and get the glue coming through the bottom which I think we can do and get it clamped really well I don't think it'll break again now it could break in a different spot there may just be that much internal stress here I don't see why um, these sides could just be pulling this thing apart you know it sometimes when they put these things together they put them together under quite a bit of stress so you know that may just be the issue you know you could put cleats across there but you know cleats don't necessarily fix that kind of a problem it it may crack down here in a different place if I put a cleat here you know it may crack it there um, I don't you know I don't need cleats to hold the crack that I'm going to glue together together if anything we would need a brace all the way across here to keep it from pulling apart you know what I mean so I don't know we're just going to have to cross that bridge as we come to it I'm going to go ahead and fill this uh, with glue and devise a clamping system and I'll show you what that looks like Those of you who have watched all my videos will know that I use this same clamp on that uh, Regal Mandolin. And of course it depends on which, <laughs> it depends on whether or not I get that video out before this one, you know, that's the problem with this kind of thing. But uh, anyway, I did already use this same clamping method on a Regal Mandolin. And uh, I, these clamps are never going to do me any good again, so I figure I can use them right now and I, I can just cut out a little bit more and they'll fit this guitar just perfectly. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, as you can see, I have a very similar setup to the way I clamped up that teardrop shaped mandolin. What I've done here, these clamps are only long enough to go, you know, they won't go all the way across the body. So I cut, made a couple of cutouts in these so that I could squeeze down on them and same way over here. So that'll give me some room. Then I'll put a bigger bar clamp across the middle. But the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got warm water here and I'm going to paint this crack with warm water. That really makes the difference in my opinion in terms of glue penetration. It's, it's even sometimes hard to get the water to go down in the crack, but if you can't get the water down in the crack, how are you going to get the glue in the crack? Sometimes it works better to just take a paper towel, soak it, and then rub it back and forth across the crack like that, and it will often push the liquid down in there better. So that's what I'm doing here in this case. And since we're working with such a big crack, pretty sure it's going down in there now. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about this side over here yet, and it may need something too, but right now we're just going to concentrate on one side at a time. Now we'll use the bottle like a syringe in the sense that it pushes pressure out get the top perpendicular to the crack there so that it actually squeezes glue down in the crack rather than just putting it up to the surface. I can see it going down in there so I'm pretty sure we're going all the way through. You use a lot more glue this way and it kind of wastes a little bit of glue but it's worth it to make sure that you get this <laughs> penetrated well. And then as before, you want to work it, and I can see it moving the glue around when I do that. And I'll take this damp brush, and I'll work it down in there in the cracks. You only get one good chance at this. You don't want to have to do it twice. So take your time, get the glue down in there. And it's not a bad idea to check it on the inside to make sure the glue's getting into the inside. And that's what we'll do with this. Get myself in a position where I can tell, oh yeah, yep, yep, glue all the way back. All the way back, I can see it. Um, I don't see any right here, but I think it's okay. I'll uh, work on this front edge right here, but all the way down through there, I can see glue all the way. So. 
we're definitely getting penetration. I will try right in this area here to see if we can get better penetration. And I'll get more of this glue from that end there and work it into here. But I'm pretty sure it's fine. Okay, I feel 100% confident that we've got very good glue penetration there. Well, you can see the glue squeeze out already, or at least I think you can. Let's zoom you in so you can. I believe you can see the glue squeeze out there, and uh, it did a wonderful job all the way down in, even to these little fine cracks. You can see the glue squeezing out. Now, the trick now is to try to make sure that we get it perfectly level as we start to really put the clamping pressure on it. Let me wipe off this extra glue so I can see how level we are. And, you know, I can try to decide which side needs to go down and which side needs to go up and that kind of thing. I think this side needs to go down just a little bit. I've got this big, the only other clamp I've got that'll reach across this now is these bar clamps. I, need, I probably should get me some newer bar clamps instead of these old school ones, but they do the job. There's a piece of leather there so that the bar won't touch the top. And I'll just start to barely squeeze it and you can see the glue coming out already. Once again, we'll clean up before we get too far along. And I'm just again trying to make sure that I got the top where it should be. That feels pretty good right there. I'm gonna hold that top right there as I tighten it down some more. And you can see the bar is not touching the top there because it's this, it, you know, that's the piece of leather that's just in case that it would. That feels really pretty darn good actually don't see how it could get much better except that it's still not really tight enough so we're gonna have to put some more tension on it it's still squeezing it out I can see it and yeah it's squeezing out a lot more glue now that's what you want you want to squeeze almost all that glue out of there and I know some people say well that weakens the joint it doesn't it makes it stronger I can promise you Squeeze out as much of that glue as you can get out and your joint will be really tight. That's really smooth and that joint is really tight. Don't think you could get it much tighter, though I'm trying. I'm going to dampen this cloth, clean it off and just do one final cleanup. Well, there's what she looks like on the, uh, you know, final clamp up and glue up there. We're just going to let that set. I'm going to probably let that set overnight even. I, I just don't want to rush it. Um, there's a lot of pressure on that. And I think once that glue holds it, it'll stay. Well, it, this appears to have done a very nice job. It's very nice across there. You can't really feel it, you know, other than... You know, the fact that when they glued it the first time, I think they got a slight wrinkle in there and they must have sanded it down or something. So you can kind of feel that original repair. But the crack that I glued, really you can't even hardly feel it at all. And this crack here you can feel a little bit. I think it's been re-glued. I'm going to look at it real close with the inspection mirror here and see what it tells me. If I look at it, get the light down here at the right angle. I thought it had been re-glued. I mean, it's such a tiny crack. Nope, it's not. I'll be darned. You know, with your naked eye, you would just swear that that's not a problem. But when you get down with this, you can see it is a problem. And I can see it opening and closing. Because <laughs> I can't really see it move when I'm doing this. So I've really learned something. This inspection mirror on looking at these cracks is a really good idea. I never really did that much before. But yeah, I can definitely see that move when I'm under here. But by, with my naked eye, 
I mean, if I really look at it close now that I know it moves, I can sort of see it, but it's really very, very, very minor. So we're gonna set it back up and glue this crack and let it set again. We're about ready to do this. I thought I'd talk about this setup again a little bit. Uh, in a previous video, someone says, why did I go to all this trouble? Why didn't I just put cross clamps across here? And you know, you could probably get away with that to some degree, and it would probably work to some degree. I feel like this gives me a much, much more uh, even pressure. I feel like it uh, really spreads the stress out. Um, you know, and I feel on a long crack especially, I feel like you got to have the clamp going this way to clamp that center. Clamping this way and clamping that way will actually kind of almost bow up the center. So, you know, it, I've done it that way before. Don't get me wrong, I have actually tried that and done that before, but I've never been totally satisfied with it. This, I am absolutely satisfied with. This spreads the stress out real good. Uh, doesn't put any particular stress in one particular place. Uh, it, it keeps it open enough that you can, you know, manipulate this and get it level. Uh, I'm really happy with this setup. So, you know, it may be a little bit more work, but it's not that much work. And, and the clamping part is very easy, actually. So, so, I don't know. Everybody's got their own thing. I'm not knocking any other method. You can always use other methods. As I've always said, this is just the method that I really do like. It works really well. We're going to get the glue down in this crack and I'm going to before I get the glue on there I'm going to paint it with some water again and a lot of times even with the brush like as I mentioned before painting it doesn't always work all that great it's sometimes it's better just to take a cloth and work it in it actually works in a little bit better sometimes with the cloth I can really see that it's unlevel more now <laughs> with that glue in there. So I'm trying to get this side down more. Looks like I can hold it down with my finger, tighten this clamp maybe. It's pretty good, but I can still feel it. So I'm gonna try to do more. I'm afraid I'm gonna, there's a lot of pressure I'm putting on that to be honest. Doesn't want to stay down either, really. Aha, that's good. That's much better. Okay, we're going to have to let that set a while, too. There's a lot of stress on that. I know that we've got another crack along here that's going to need work also. But right now, we're just going to let this set up and do its thing. It's time now to glue this crack along here. And uh, I, you know, I can reach in there and feel the crack. It goes all the way through, all the way up through here. You know, I tried, you know, a dry run of just clamping it like this, and you would think that would probably work, but it doesn't. I haven't actually tried these calls yet. I just made the calls, and uh, I'm gonna try it clamping it with that now, and I think that'll put enough pressure on it that we can, you know, make it work. And I'm just trying to reach in here and see if I can feel that gap closing up. Yeah, yeah, I think I can feel that closing up and I, I don't feel it wiggling here now where before when I was clamping it, I couldn't get it tight enough. So I think we're in good shape there now. But I don't think I'm going to use these clamps. They're just barely, barely long enough. I think I'm going to go ahead and use these pipe clamps. They'll put more pressure on it, too, and I can control the pressure even better with those. But the first thing I have to do is get glue down in this crack. So I, without any pressure on this, I've got, I got the crack spread as much as I can spread it. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of glue coming through. I'm just pumping it back and forth to get that glue down in there. I'm gonna work on this till I get that glue coming through there because I definitely feel like it's gotta go all the way through. I can see it squeezing out here on the top pretty good. 
but I definitely want it to be squeezing out inside too. Well, it doesn't look like it's coming through, so I'm going to go to the next extreme, and that is I'm going to get the air compressor with the rubber nozzle, and I'm going to make that stuff go down through there. I've got the air compressor here. This is a soft rubber tip on this, and I'm going to put more water on that crack, and I'm going to just force that down through there. I'm pretty sure this will blow it through. I see a little bit coming through, but not very much. I think what the problem is, this is much thicker wood right here than it is in the other parts. This is actually pretty thick. It's, it's, I would say it's getting close to a quarter inch thick. I do see a little bit of penetration, but not that much. Well, I'm a little disappointed. It doesn't seem to be going down in there very well. We'll try another method here. I have syringes. I just don't have much faith in them getting it down in there. So I'm going to try forcing it down in here a little bit more with this. I'm squeezing the bottle really hard trying to keep a good seal on there. Let's see if we can see anything off of that now. Oh yeah. Yeah, that definitely made a difference. I still don't have it everywhere, but it's a lot better. I've got glue at this end and about right in here, not much right in here. So that definitely made a difference. Let me just wipe off the mess before I make much more mess. Like I said, I've got it here and about here. So right in the middle here, I don't have very much. I'm gonna wet that down and try forcing it a little bit more right here. I'll be honest, I still don't see very much right here in the middle. So, what I'll try doing there is I'll just have to attack it from the underneath side. And what I'll do is just take some of this glue and I'll come up from the underneath side and get it in that crack. The crack on the inside is actually pretty good size. But I think the crack is not just straight through. I think it's jagged through, and that's why it's not going straight through. That's going to make a difference right there. I can tell a big difference already. That brush is fairly stiff, and it works its way up in the crack pretty good. This crack on top is a lot skinnier than the crack on the bottom. I think we're in very good shape. Better than... I was expecting there at the beginning. I'm going to clean this rag off and we'll clean up the rest of that and squeeze out. Okay, I'm pretty confident that we've done a very good job there. I'm not going to clean off the inside until I squeeze it tight here. Well, I started putting this one clamp on here, realized I didn't have the camera on, but it's, it's really squeezing the glue out right there very well. Yeah, that's working really good. And I imagine it's working good on the inside, too. Let's see if somehow, by chance, you can see that on the inside with this mirror. Oh, yeah, that's definitely squeezing it out now. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not, but I think you can. Can't really tell if you can see that for sure. This viewfinder in this camera is just works different than the other one, so I'm used to that other one. But uh, I can definitely see a good squeeze out the full length of the <laughs> crack, so we'll get in there and clean that out now. It's like a perfect job, absolutely perfect. I don't think there could be done any better. We'll let that set overnight, and I think we're in good shape. The guitar has been glued and real well. I mean, you can tell now it's just as solid. I'm, not, I'm using the fleshy part of my finger. I never do this with my fingernail. And you can tap on there and you hear nothing but just solidness. So it's very solid now. These cracks have been re-glued. As I mentioned before, somebody else already touched these things up with something. And that's kind of messed it up. It, you know, there's no way to hide that, I don't think. 
and again, this wear around here, I'm leaving the wear, but these, where the damage is, I'm gonna try at least just touching it up with the black so it doesn't stand out like such a sore thumb. I had my wife look at this for the color because even this, I can't 100% be sure what color it is. I thought that it might be black, you know, a dark, dark brown with a little black in it or something, but she said it looks pretty black to her. So I'm just gonna use plain old black dye and just get in here. You know, you could use a lot of different things. You could use a magic marker or furniture marker or whatever, but I just use this black leather dye. I like it because it's a little more forgiving in my opinion. Uh, it's a permanent dye in a sense, but you can also take uh, alcohol and lighten it up if you get it too dark or something like that. So, you know, I think it's a, a good option for this. Yeah, it doesn't stand out too bad there after you wipe it off a little bit. You can't hardly make it just completely disappear when you're dealing with finish as we've talked about before, but it it improves it, I think. It just, the, the real damaged parts, these scrap, big deep scratches and gouges and things, if they just don't stand out so much, it just doesn't look near as bad. Pretty deep gouge right here. And a pretty good scratch right across here most of the rest of it i'm going to leave this crack goes all the way down through here it'd be nice to darken this crack just looks a lot better to me dyed like that you know again i can't really get rid of that but I don't know, or at least I can't think of anything that would get rid of it, because that's it's it's pretty much blended into the old finish, and I just don't think anything I do is going to change that much. I'll tell you what I will try, because the old finish is kind of uh, satiny, and this is kind of glossy. Uh, you know, I will try to buff it. I mean, just kind of gruff it up a little bit and see if it will make it look a little better. Um, you know, a lot of people have suggested you can do that with a you know, sandpaper type deal, a real fine sandpaper. And I've heard all kinds of ways to try to make a satin finish, but to try to make it match something like this, which is, it's not exactly satin. It's more like an eggshell of anything. It's little tiny cracks in the egg. So I don't know. We'll see if I can make that look better. If I can come up with a little process that looks like it's gonna work, I'll show you what that is. I may regret this, but just using a little bit of 400, seems to knock the shine off of that and I'm just gonna very lightly go over just this buff shiny part here and see if if we can't do a little bit better and get rid of some of that gloss. May not this may be a total fail because most of these cracks are going this way and my sanding marks are going this way. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to decide. Try a little semi-chrome polish and uh, see, I may have to do the whole top with this to see if this blends it a little bit better. Hmm, not quite sure yet. Doesn't look any worse. So, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Doesn't look like much of an improvement or a, a problem either way. Really kind of looks about the same, to be honest. It's really hard. When you're dealing with finishes on wood, it's really hard to make a match just almost impossible especially an old old finish like this like I said it's just got eggshell all through it this new part that they put on here doesn't have the eggshell actually over here you can see the eggshell through it pretty good here not quite as much although you can see it through the finish 
I don't know. I don't think I'm going to mess with that much more because it's really, it doesn't seem to have hurt it one way or the other, but it doesn't seem to have helped it much either. Regarding this old L1, I've, I have held the guitar up and looked down the fretboard. It looks surprisingly flat. Um, you know, it doesn't have any underbow in it, although there is a, there is a little bit of a roller coaster to it, a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm exaggerating it. It's, it's just a little bit of a high spot in a place or two. This, this has those little tiny frets on it. They appear to be standing up fairly well. So I think we can file this and, and improve it. I'm gonna go down through here and see what it does, what it looks like. I can, I can feel it bouncing as I go down through there. There's, I'm just gonna lightly do it and see which ones. This one's high for sure. This one a little bit high. A little bit here, here. So it's kind of a roller, you know, it goes up and down and over like that. I think we can get that out of here though. I don't think it's gonna be that bad. Yes, I know that most people put dye on these and they can tell, but I can see them pretty good. Just, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm nearsighted. I've got good close up vision. So, you know, I can twist it like that and see if there's anything that's dull where it's not shiny. Right here, it's a little dull yet. It's just a little bit of a low spot right there. I believe that's good enough. I believe that's good enough. So we should be able to recrown those now, and then we'll try to level out in between each fret. One of the biggest problems with this guitar, and I think you can see it, is all the cracks down through here, and they go almost the full length of the fretboard. Um, I'm not sure how to address that. I, you know, not offhand anyway. I guess super glue is probably going to be the best way to address it. Um, what I'm going to do first, though, because I've already leveled these, I've already recrowned them, and I've also polished them with this 400 so that they're nice and smooth and shiny. And now I'm going to go through here and do like I do, and that is level in between the frets because this is really badly out of level. And I'm going to work on that for a while and then maybe see what we've got left and possibly touch it up with the, with the CA glue and see what, what that would do. So here's a brand new razor blade. Get in, in between these frets and clean it up some. Once again, I probably won't be able to get rid of the fingernail grooves because they're pretty deep. But I would like to get this cleaned up some and, and make it look better because it just doesn't look that good right now. Some of the wear is good. I like to see a little wear, but I don't like to see it so bad that you just it's just not playable. And that's about where we're at right now. It looks like it's going to clean up pretty good. It's actually kind of a soft wood that's on the fretboard. It doesn't appear to be ebony. The pearl being harder is actually higher than the rest of the fret. Got the fretboard cleaned up and leveled quite a bit, but you can see those cracks in there still, and there are like seven cracks starting right here that go a long ways up through there. Now some of them run out, but there's several that go all the way. So. I've got the uh, CA glue here, and I'm going to, as carefully as I can, with this tiny tip, feed that into these cracks. And we're gonna work our way all the way down the fretboard. Now that means we're gonna have to clean up the fretboard again, but that's okay. I, I wanted to start out with it level before I did this so that I knew what I'm working with. But we'll have to level it yet again after we put on the uh, glue.
Well, that left quite a mess, to be honest with you. It's going to take a lot of cleanup, you can see there. But you can see how many cracks there were, too. There were a lot of cracks. But I think that'll stabilize the wood and make it where if, if somebody did take this fretboard off, instead of it just splintering into pieces, it'll probably hold together as one piece now. Of course, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of that glue may have gone down and actually stuck to the neck. There's no way to know. But I felt like I had to fill the cracks up with this glue. So we did the best we could with what we had to work with. Well, through the magic of YouTube vision, that looked quick and easy. But let me assure you, that was not quick and that was not easy. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go back over some of it again with this sharper brand new razor blade because it's very hard to get this off of here. Like these right here, they just won't fill up. They just keep keep running out instead of filling up. It just keeps sucking down in that crack. Obviously, that means there's a big hole down there, so at least we're filling it up. I don't see any point in going this far and not getting them completely filled at this point. I'm going to try to fill this biggest hole, hole right here with CA glue too because it's a deep hole. Well there she is. Now that looks almost like a new fretboard compared to what it did look like. I filled this gigantic hole down here and it wasn't just, there was one deep fingernail hole but there was a big just wildwood out spot and I filled the whole spot with CA glue and it really doesn't look that bad at all. You know, it just, I think it just looks great compared to where we were before. Yeah, if you look at it in the right light, you can still sort of see where those cracks went through, but those cracks are completely sealed now. I oiled the fretboard. I think that's in real good shape. You know, I was almost debating on whether or not it needed a whole new fretboard, but that really turned out nice. I, this is the crowning achievement on this guitar, is that fretboard, saving that thing, because it was in bad shape. I mean, truly bad shape. So, now I think we're just about ready. Uh, we're waiting on parts. Uh, when those parts get here, we're ready to string this baby up. Through the magic of video, this is only going to seem like just a few seconds to you, but uh, it's been quite a few days since I was back on this old Gibson guitar here. Uh, I will tell you that uh, this all clamped up real nice, and you know, using the fleshy part of my finger, you can tell there's nothing vibrating, just nice, clear thumping. And uh, it's been sitting for about a week or a little more than a week now and no signs of any stress or anything. It looks like it's good and solid. This part here is good and solid. Very, very pleased with it. The uh, cracked up fretboard is uh, good and solid. Looks just wonderful, really. I never dreamed it would look that good. I never dreamed it would look that solid. So couldn't be more happy with that. Um, just really looks good. I was waiting on these tuning keys from Stumac, and the good news is they fit like a glove. They go to all the trouble of making these things as authentic looking as they can, and you know, they do look pretty old and original. The whiteness of these is a dead giveaway. I mean, they could be a little off color, wouldn't hurt nothing. But you know, at least the, the look and feel of this is, is really, 
right, I think. But the holes line up good and all that kind of thing. And even you can tell where the original ones were that these line up pretty good to the original. But what I don't like is they send these new ferrules and you can see here those ferrules don't match. They don't match anything. Yeah, they have the hexagon head on them. You would have to drill these holes out to put these in. Why they don't just come with those little ring ferrules, those little skinny ring ferrules like they used to have on these guitars, I don't know. Since they go to all that trouble to make them authentic, and it would probably be cheaper than these kinds of ferrules too, I don't know, just don't get it. So I'm not going to put those in there. I'm going to go look and see if I have some of those ring type ferrules that might work on this. I don't think I have any more of them, but I'm going to go check. Well, if I have any of those stamped metal ring ferrules, I don't know where they are. I searched high and low. Can't come up with any more of them. I used to have some. But anyway, probably used them on other projects. Before I put these in here, I've noticed there's this uh, old sticker deal here, and it's really dried and really hard. I know about the... Uh, you know, Zippo lighter fluid trick. So I'm gonna try that on this and see if it'll remove it. I kind of don't know though on this. This is pretty hard and pretty old. It did look like it softened it. I did try it off camera a little while ago and it did look like after a while it seemed to soften a little bit. So just gonna rub on it and rub on it and rub on it and see if we can get it to come off. It's a shame to have that ugly scar on the back of the peg head there. Well, that turned out really good. Now, I am noticing something here that could be a real breakthrough. Don't know if you can see it. Now you notice we've talked about the buffing uh, ability of these before, how well they buff out a finish. But not only did this buff out this finish in this case with the combination of the lighter fluid, but you see all these fine cracks that were in here before the eggshell cracks? It appears to me that it has removed those eggshell cracks. That is really weird, because there are, eh, to be honest, I don't see as many of them up above it, but there are some along the sides here that aren't there now. I mean, like, I can see them along here, but they're not out in there anymore, and they're not down here. I really think it's removed them. I am going to experiment here. See all these eggshell cracks here? I don't know how well that's showing up. I don't even know if you can see it at all or not. But they're little, tiny, little, tiny eggshell cracks all through here. I am going to see what happens because I think that's going to get rid of them. It looks like it's melting it finished right back together and getting rid of those cracks all in one motion. I don't expect it to happen in one application because I had to rub like crazy to get it to get to do it up there so I'll have to do it several times but uh, Let's see what happens. It's worth a try. If worse comes to worse, at least it'll clean it up. It's not, may not, may not get rid of the cracks, but it'll buff it out at least. It's definitely shining it up. I don't see the cracks really disappearing as they appear to have disappeared above, but they might if I keep rubbing. It, I do think it is actually getting rid of them. Uh, not to the same degree it got rid of them up there, I don't think, but it's, I think it will if I keep at it. Guys, it's turned it like glass. And I can still see them under there, but they're not, they don't, it's definitely improved it. I mean, a lot, not just a little bit, a whole lot. A 
Look at the back of that shine. I'm telling you, it's made a huge difference. It's, it, I can still see remnants of those cracks under there, but man, you gotta look hard now. If a guy kept at that, I think you'd get rid of all of them. Wow, that really made it look nice. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it looked a whole lot better than that on day one it came out of the factory. <laughs> I'm halfway tempted to try it on the front side here. You know it may not need the it may not need the uh, lighter fluid even this stuff here buffs like crazy. I mean it really does buff. That looks a lot better. It's slick, smooth now feeling compared to the way it was. Not bad, not bad. I'm going to stop there, but that's that's really good. That's really an improvement.